Hey YouTube, welcome back. Today we're going to be covering the age-old question of, is XR still worth it? Well, in a previous episode we were talking about impact drivers and whether or not the good old XR impact driver was worth it, or if you should move on over to the new atomic impact driver, save a little bit of size, but still have similar output and similar power. Today we are going to be talking about the DCD 800, the new XR compact drill, replacing the old 791 versus the king of the hill going to the DCD-996. Now I know there's two other uh, DeWalt drills that have since surpassed this one in power. I don't actually have those, so we're going to be comparing it to this one to see if it's comparable. See which one's running better and see if the gap between them, if at all, is worth spending any extra money or getting an older model that might soon get replaced. So we're going to get into that here on Tinker with Tools. All right, so as I mentioned, right now, you can get this drill for anywhere between $100 and $115 and $130, depending on the sale that's on tool only. When I bought this new one tool only, it was $159. So it's newer, smaller, less powerful supposedly, but it's also doesn't have some of the bells and whistles that the other one has. So is it worth spending a little bit extra money to get something more compact? Or should you stick with the cheaper option and get a little more power? So let's go over the specs right now and then we're gonna get into the testing. All right, so we are gonna be starting out with some bigger stuff today. Not a whole lot of point in going with small stuff when we know it's just able to drive it pretty easy. Um, 996 we're going to be starting in speed 3. This one obviously only has two speeds so it's going to be in speed 2. We're going to first go with the smaller 800 and we are going to be driving in a 5 inch Spax. On 3, 2, 1, go! These are going to be blistering times especially on the smaller stuff. Alright, going now with the 996 in speed 3. In 3, 2, 1, I actually, just the eye test, the compact 800 actually felt faster there. Okay, we're gonna be going now to a bigger six inch one and ready, set, go. It technically did drive it, but we did have a cutout right there at the end, but it still drove it. I'd consider that flush. The DCD 996 in three, two, one. That was not a cutout at the end. So uh, even though I felt it was faster on the first one, now we're gonna be going with the five inch power lag in speed two in three, two, one. It did almost kick out her cut out there at the end. I don't think that has any sort of anti-rotation or anti-kickback, um, but uh, that almost feels like what's happening there. Going with the 996 now in speed three in three, two, one. This one does feel, the 996 does feel a bit stronger. Okay, we're gonna be moving up to doing two timber locks now. Okay, six inch timber lock in speed two with the DCD 800. Three, two, one. Okay, so it did cut out, but it managed to drive it. We'll see how it does when we go up to the eight inch. But first, let's go ahead and start with the six inch on the 996. That was actually a clutch issue. It let go of the bit. So it did finish it. We'll add those two bits of time together. So neither one had a perfect run there. So I can't really say one is better than the other. Okay, going to the eight inch. I do not expect this is going to drive it all the way in in a single pull. So ready, set, go. All right, it managed to do it in three, two, one. So I think overall in the driving test, the 996 has definitely felt more powerful. May not be as fast almost, I would say. All right, so now we're gonna move over to a two x four for some drilling tasks. Same five amp hour battery, but a one inch Bosch Daredevil bit going into a two x four. And three, two, one. And wow, that just blazed through that. Switching over to the trusty 996. Same bit, one inch Bosch Daredevil. Three, two, one. 
So we are now going to be going with a one inch, I call it a speed bore. It's not, a, it's the spider version of the speed bore. In three, two, one. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is the test that started the failure for this drill when we tested it against the Milwaukee. So going again in speed two in three, two, one. So it is failing in speed two. We are gonna drop it down to speed one. So the time is obviously going to suffer from that. Still has plenty of power. It has no problem doing that on speed one, but obviously that is going to be the difference between the bigger and the smaller drill is when we get up into these bigger tests. So we are switching over to a four by four here. We are also going to an inch and a quarter spider uh, self-feeding spade bit. This is the part where I start to get a little nervous with some of these bigger bits on, on this wood. So we're gonna, we're gonna stay in speed three, but see how it goes. It's three, two, one. We are getting a cut out. We're now gonna try and continue the hole for the sake of how much wood is um, on speed two. Okay, so from that point forward, we are probably gonna be down on speed one. But this is the kind of bit that I start to wonder how well the smaller drill is going to do. Okay, so we're obviously in speed one with this drill and there is not a lot to hold on with this one. Okay, in three, two, one. Okay, no problem. All right, so we were running the inch and a half through the four by four, um, but at the end of the day, it just didn't feel all that safe without the auxiliary handle. Um, we're gonna go ahead and try the final bit, the one we were planning. I wasn't necessarily ever gonna do it with the compact drill, but this is an inch and three quarters Irwin self-feeding bit. And we're gonna try it with the handle and see if we can feel comfortable about that. In speed one on three, two, one. I definitely recommend if you're gonna be running something that big, I think that is where the 800 is going to show its limitations. So there you have your test results. Um, if I had to guess, obviously not being able to complete certain tests in, in your higher speeds is going to hurt the compact drill. We're probably going to crown the 996 the champion there, but that doesn't mean that the 800 isn't the better drill for certain individuals. If you never have an intention of chucking up an inch and three quarter self-feeding bit, a uh, self-feeding auger bit, then I don't know that you actually want to carry around the extra weight. That is one thing that I have never liked about the 996 is, especially when you're comparing it to some of the other drills in its class, just how long it is. Obviously, I think when they come out with a replacement for that drill, that we're going to be some seeing something that is much more compact and more competitive in size while still delivering an increase in power. The 800 is a great drill, and I think it showed that again today, being able to keep up with a drill that is technically a higher end drill than it. At the end of the day, is the 996 still worth it? I think there are better drills out there on the market, but if you're in the DeWalt lineup and you need something that really has those top of the line features, yeah, it's going to be there. But at the end of the day, I think you'd be better off getting the 999, which is the flex fold advantage, or the 998 from Lowe's, which is the power detect, and getting even more power, and that's where I think this would really set, set it apart. For smaller fasteners, smaller, or any of the fasteners we did, and even the smaller drills bits, I'd recommend this drill over the XR each and every day. The benefits of the smaller size are just incredible. 
but you do lose that auxiliary handle. And as you could see on those bigger bits, I didn't even want to try the smaller drill on those because I did not feel like I would be able to stop it from ripping out of my hands. Um, the 800 really is probably the fa my favorite drill that I've used up to this point. I, I think there's a lot of good things that the DeWald is doing right now. So I'm excited to see where this XR replacement comes in and what they do with it that's going to make it better. Because at the end of the day, my gripes with it are the form factor and the flex fold advantage and the power detect don't solve any of that. They are for everything that I can see, the same drill body is just going to have different internals the harness the electronics and the battery better and give you better runtime or not necessarily runtime allow you to access the higher power of those bigger things so there you have it really you can't go wrong with these tools depending on what you're doing but i do think depending on the task if it's smaller oriented go with the more compact drill if you know you're going to be doing day in and day, day out the bigger stuff obviously get yourself one of the bigger drills and i think you'll be happy with it um, hopefully they come out with that bigger replacement here by the end of the year or first part of next year and we can actually see what a newer modern top of the line drill from dewalt looks like because the rest of their top of the line tools and the new tools they're coming out with lately have really been taking over different markets that they're doing and that's really encouraging for what's to come thanks for watching this video if you like what you see go ahead and hit the like button if you want to see more hit subscribe we've got another video queued up for you here so go ahead and watch that until we release a new one, and we'll see you next time on Tinker with Tools.